word legend gets thrown around a lot in wrestling, but we think it's safe to say that if anyone deserved that moniker, it was Terry Funk. The man from Double Cross Ranch in Amarillo, Texas shed blood across six decades just to entertain the people. During his lifelong stretch in the ring, Terry Funk appeared for nearly any promotion you cared to mention, for everyone from Harley Race to Cactus Jack, and managed to pull off quite a few wrestling firsts, such as being the first winner of the World's Strongest Tag Determination League. It may be hard to believe, but back in 1977, Funk was more of a traditional wrestler. Funk had not yet crafted his hardcore style, and was a very technical but more simplistic boots and tights worker commonly tagging alongside his brother Dory Funk. As well as his work in America, Funk worked across Japan too, going on to win the first installation of the World's Strongest Tag Determination League, the ill-translated All Japan Pro Wrestling Round Robbing Tag Tournament. Terry and Dory Funk prevailed by 14 points, just a solitary point ahead of the duo of Giant Barber and Jumbo Saruta. The Funks won all their matches against the other teams except for two, both of which went to time limit draws, hitting the 45 minute mark. This was enough to bag them the overall victory with the highest total and help them take home all the gold. The brothers also collectively became the first multiple time winners, going on to prevail again in 1979 and 1982. First brothers to compete at WrestleMania. At WrestleMania 2, the Funks faced off with Tito Santana and Junkyard Dog in a brawling tag encounter. Before then, two sets of brother-in-laws had competed at the show of shows, the US Express at Mania 1 and the Hart Foundation at Mania 2, on top of cousins in the shape of the British Bulldogs. In the penultimate match of the Los Angeles portion of WrestleMania 2, the Funk brothers made history as the first Blood Brothers to compete at the event, beating the future El Salvador and JYD in a match featuring an early table spot, with Terry Funk picking up the 1-2-3 after a well-placed shot with manager Jimmy Hart's megaphone. In the years that followed, more relative tag teams competed, including the fabulous Rougeau brothers, Owen and Bret Hart, and Jake Roberts and Sam Houston. This has only ballooned in modern times, with everyone from the Hardy Boys to Cody Rhodes and Goldust taking part in the granddaddy of them all, but only the Funks can say that they did it first. The first major three-man match. Although now semi-regular, the triple threat match is a relatively new creation, with the first one taking place back in 1994. At the time, Funk was the reigning ECW World Heavyweight Champion, having won it about a month and a half earlier at Holiday Hell. At the night the line was crossed in February 1994, Terry Funk wrestled against both the franchise Shane Douglas and Sabu in a three-way dance, the first in a major professional wrestling organisation. Running for 60 minutes, it was quite the spectacle. Featuring run-ins from everyone from Sabu's Handler 911 to Sherry Martel to Paulie Dangerously, it ended in a time limit draw. Douglas recalled, I remember coming back to the back and thinking to myself, I don't know how we did it, but somehow that was a pretty damn good match. ECW would utilise this match type many more times before the WWF did. They had their first triple threat match in 1997, an intercontinental title match featuring Owen Hart, Triple H and Goldust the first ever main event at an ECW pay-per-view. Although ECW had had supercars previously, ECW did not have their first pay-per-view event until 1997. Their debut pay-per-view had been pushed back due to nervous twitches from providers over the November 1996 mass transit incident. Going into the match, Funk was not part of the show. Instead, his prodigy, Tommy Dreamer, gave up his place to the Funker. The subsequent match was built around the journey of Funk with his vital role in ECW allowing his high profile position in the promotion's first pay-per-view event. The winner of a three-way dance would qualify to challenge ECW champion Raven in the main event. The three-way dance pitted longtime Raven's nest lackey Stevie Richards, longtime Raven rivaled the Sandman and Terry Funk together. Funk eventually won the match, helping in the ousting of Richards before eliminating the Sandman with a barbed wire wrapped moonsault. A whole load of camaraderie and chicanery occurred in the main event. Although Raven put Funk through a table, he managed to survive as Dreamer eliminated any external threats in the arena who may be associated with the grungy title holder. Dreamer even hit a DDT but Raven kicked out, although the bell rang by mistake but in the end Funk won with a small package. This too made him the first to be victorious in the main event of an ECW pay-per-view event. The first wrestler in his 50s to win a WWF title. From what our research could find, and yes, we do research these things, Terry Funk was the WWF's first wrestler to win a title in their 50s. 
While it's true that in 1976, at the turn of his 50th birthday, Killer Kowalski was a holder of the WWF World Tag Team titles, he did not actually win the title in his 50s, having won it at 49 years old. Yes, we'll admit that's a little pedantic, but it's our list, so them's the rules. Funk returned to the WWF in late 1997. Typically, it was only 11 days after retiring in grand fashion with his WrestleFest commemoration event. As the pantyhose donning Chainsaw Swinging Chainsaw Charlie, he formed a team with ex-IWA King of the Deathmatch, rival Cactus Jack. At WrestleMania 14, Funk and Jack won the WWF World Tag Team title from the New Age Outlaws in a dumpster match. At the time, Funk was 53, making him the first, to our knowledge, WWF title holder to win a belt in his 50s. The reign was pretty blinking, you'll miss it however, lasting less than a day as the Outlaws won them back the next night. Before the decade and the millennium as a whole were out, others in their 50s captured titles in the company, most famously Vince McMahon, who won the WWF title. Epilogue Funk's career is filled with legacy-defining moments. Storied and lengthy, Terry has undoubtedly had a huge influence on the wrestling world that we see before us today. Middle-aged and crazy, the Texans' first are examples of his contribution to the business. Terry Funk's life is one filled with toughness, dedication and heartache. Terry Funk was one of the very best to ever lace up a pair of boots, and in that it is fitting we take time to remember a man whose legacy will live forever. But tell us, what are your favourite memories of Terry Funk? Sound off in the comment section and let us know.